quick shout out to my patrons. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey y'all, it's Kate from Miller Apothecary and today we're actually gonna do a book tag, another book tag. I was tagged by Grace Dion in the Postscript book tag and as Grace explained in her amazing video, which I'll link down below, this tag feels like a tag that you should do at the end of the year, but now we're in March, so it's a little late for that. So I'm thinking back to over the past year, year and a half, since last January, essentially, 2021. Um, and so there's 10 questions here and I'm just going to get right into it. Number one, the longest book you read this year and the book that took you the longest to finish. So the longest book I've read since January of last year was The Count of Monte Cristo and that came in at 1,192 pages. The book that took me the longest to read and this is mostly because I set it down several times because I just can't do James Joyce. That's a portrait of the artist as a young man and that took me 119 days to read. Um, I believe I started that in November of 2020 and finished it around this time last year. Question two, a book you read this year that was outside your comfort zone in this, I'm going to say The Patience of a Dead Man, followed by the second book in that series, Dead Woman Scorn, by Michael Clark. I read these because my best friends Leslie and Sharon both absolutely loved this series and told me if I want to read horror, I, this is a good place to get into. I had, I was not a horror reader at all before that, but I absolutely loved these books. They are great haunted house stories and it was just amazing the atmosphere that Michael Clark set in these books. Number three, how many books did you reread? And this is a large number, um, mostly because last year in preparation for the new book that came out, I reread all of the Outlander books. So that's eight books on its own. Plus I did a lot of Jane Austen rereads um, and a couple here and there in addition. So. The total number from January last year until now was 17 books that I reread. Number four, your favorite reread, and that would be, I think, Anne of Green Gables because it just came at the right time of the year last year. I read it in December and it just was that hug that I needed at that time of the year. So Anne of Green Gables, definitely my favorite reread. Um, Number five, a book that you read for the first time that you look forward to rereading. And this can be so many books I read last year. I can't wait to reread so many of them. I love rereading books because you get, at least I find new things in every single book that I read. Every time I reread a book, I find new things. So I love rereading books at different times. My answer for this, I'm sticking with just one book, and that's The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Before I even finished reading this book, I wanted to reread it already. And if you didn't see this in my best reads of 2021 bracket, this came out as the winner for the overall best read I had last year. I will link that video down below. I'll link the finale. It was a series of videos. It was so much fun to do, but The Starless Sea came out as the winner. Number six, favorite single short story or novella you read this year. In this, I'm going to flip and say an essay, and that's John Wayne, A Love Story um, by uh, John Wayne, A Love Song by Joan Didion. And this is part of our Joan Didion read along that we started in November. We're reading one to two essays a month from her giant collection, We Tell Ourselves Stories in Order to Live. And I just love Joan Didion and I love her essay on John Wayne because it brings back all that nostalgia from my childhood. Number seven, Mass Appeal, a book that you liked and would recommend to a wide variety of readers. I wrote down several books here and then crossed them out and then wrote other books and then crossed them out. And I've landed on House in the Cerulean Sea because I think just about every single person I've talked to, even people that don't normally like the same books, found things that they loved in this book. So I'm going with House in the Cerulean Sea, which is known to be a hug in book format. 
Number eight, specialized APL, a book you liked that but would hesit be hesitant to recommend to just anyone. And for me, this is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. As you know, I absolutely loved this book in this whole series. I can't wait for the third book. Um, and while I think it'll appeal to a lot of different people, there are some people that it wouldn't appeal to. Some people wouldn't get the sense of humor. Some people wouldn't appreciate the 80s music references here. Um, and so for those kinds of people, I would be hesitant, but I still recommend this book to just about everyone I talk to because I love the book, I love the characters, I love the world, and most importantly, I just absolutely love the author, Nicholas Eames. Which leads me into question number nine, Reflect on your year as a bookish content creator. Uh, goals, highlights, favorite videos. So first of all, I have no subscriber goals really. I'm just amazed that y'all are still here, still watching my videos, still listening to me talk about books. I'm just amazed by booktube in general. Some of my favorite things that I've done in the past year, of course the Nicholas Eames interview, was so much fun. He is such a nice guy. I can't wait to talk to him again when his third book comes out. Holy cow, what an amazing experience that was. That was just top notch. One of the top highlights of my booktube career so far. And also the Outlander tag that I did with my friend Stephanie at Mr. Richards Reads and Dry Reads. That was so much fun to do. We all got to talk about what we loved about Outlander while also talking about some of our other favorite books. It was just such a fun time. And then the last but not least, of course, tag some bookish content creators. And here I tag, and I'm sorry if y'all have done this before, if you have tag someone else, Fine Reads, Pete at Ponderings of Pete, and Amanda at The Reading and Writing Life. Y'all are tagged. If you've seen this and you haven't done it yet and you want to, consider yourself tagged also. As always, my Patreon and my Discord information will be in the description below. Keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back. Bye.